What's going on? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's Linz and Krista. Let's take a deep breath. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Yo, I was in the, the membership live call last night. Oh, how was it? Babies were taking deep, deep ass breaths. And oh, it was so good. It was great. It was so great. It's our favorite. Th- it's our favorite freaking time of the month. It's the best. <laughs> oh my god! It's like this beautiful little. Yeah. Cr- um. One of our members, Crystal, she was like, she's just like, I just have to say that like I just feel so good about showing up here and being able to get to the truth of things and the real of things right away. Big facts. And I was like, whoa, wow. I take that for granted sometimes. You know, it's such a relief. It's so liberating to just be like. Let's get to the heart now <laughs> instead of the surface. You know, I think sometimes that's hard in a group of a big group of, of women. But like we just they just drop right in. It's very, wow, very I powerful. That. I think that's why sometimes some things in the personal development space or even stuff that I've been to, it's like it actually drives me nuts because I feel like we're kind of walked to talking around things yes and you know what is too and i think a lot of people can feel this when they when they listen or attend to anything if someone's saying something that they've heard from someone else but they actually haven't earned Mm -hmm. you know like if it's actually wisdom that's not earned there's actually a quote about that something about wisdom like not being earned um so true but it's like it it doesn't there's not that magnetism the magnetism isn't there and so you kind of lose interest it's felt yeah you can definitely feel it yeah the walking around and just kind of skirting the what we're there for yes is so annoying it's 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 <laughs> so frustrating that's so damn true uh, but i think the, the human nature just wants to kind of like ease in yes. lube it up a little bit <laughs> whatever wisdom is earned not given which is mm. just like an old yeah. old saying. But yeah, I find that to be so refreshing about the group. And I think just a really beautiful thing about the community itself, mm. just ready and willing and always just down. Always. Yeah, and I think just the membership container itself, like the intention is to be there and do this very focused work. Like we have the monthly themes and yeah, there's just like a knowing of like, wow, I'm here to serve, you know, my highest self but then also support other women in doing that mm-hmm. and like because of that clarity it's it's very tangibly felt like the that intention every time that we show up it's just yeah it's really powerful it helps the work integrate mm-hmm. much faster yeah I wasn't on the last one it was <laughs> my birthday so this birthday. is coming out a little bit after my birthday but yeah. oh my gosh the kind notes from the community oh, it was God. so darling and yeah I just felt like it's so funny now, just the happier that I've gotten, you know, how much I've worked on on being happy or being content or just being whole, mm-hmm. how much l- it's like how much l- much less I need to make me happy. And then also how much more joy the little things bring me. So it's like with each birthday, I feel like I require less, you know, before I'd be like, OK, what is what am I going to get from my boyfriend? What am I going to get from my <laughs> friends? You know, what are we going to do? You're kind of like just stressing out just because you have high expectations. I think that would happen a lot where I'd have high expectations that were like never met for whatever birthday or whatever holiday. But now as I just get older or as I've worked so much harder on myself, I find that my expectations are so much less. And then the gratitude is so much more. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I experienced that too. But yeah, I think what's but what's really fun about like this particular year and celebrating you was I think my pa- favorite part of things around you are that like the people that you bring together, mm-hmm. you know, it's just really powerful. Oh my like God. it's just so, you, it was funny. I was like, we had a, we had a dinner and I was just kind of observing like people, the subtext of like what they were experiencing was like, oh yeah, I get it. I'm meeting this incredible person because mm-hmm of Krista like there's just Mm -hmm. this connection Mm -hmm. and it was really it was really beautiful to see and people that like wouldn't normally meet each other Mm -hmm. they were like coming together Mm -hmm. and celebrating you but um yeah I I completely relate to that I don't know what that is I don't know if that's like an insecurity around like celebrating ourselves Mm -hmm. and then we're like oh but what if no one does anything and then then I'm I'm shit 
That's me with the wedding, dude. I will not look at my RSVP list because I'm nervous for people to say no. Oh, literally. Dude, I can't wait. Everyone talking about it. They're like, it's going to be so fun. And I'm like, you're coming? Like, literally. They're like, aren't you excited when people don't come? I'm like, no. There wasn't a single person that we invited that we did not truly want to come. Yes. No shade. We didn't have the um, the pressure from family to invite, like, anybody that we didn't want to invite. So I'm really grateful for that. But I literally, every single person, like, I saw one no from my, a dear friend from Chicago who I haven't seen in forever, but it was someone that I just really, mm-hmm. really connected with when I was there. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I was like so sad. I'm like, God, is there anyone going to even come to this thing? <laughs> I literally was like, wow, I need to do some like subconscious reprogramming work on my... I was like, what party did no one come to I know, when I was dude. five? No joke. I was like, what birthday party did no one fucking show up to? Because I have this weird thing with it. I don't know what that is. It's sad because I... Hell or high water. I'll do anything yeah. for the people... I know. I love, but yeah, that's such a weird thing. But it was good this year, just like being able to be present with everyone's kind Mm -hmm. words and everyone's like. You're receiving. Receiving was really nice, even though I still, I haven't. I I was like, did she actually listen to? (laughs) No, you guys, I have 246 text messages and then I have, oh my God, my DMs. And that's not even just a bragging thing. It's like, I'm, what I'm going to do, this is my plan is to, to do it over time so that each day I can have a little nibble of good. I can be like, oh, this is kind. And I could be like, I'm going to have a little kindness today. Because if you do it too much, then it's like, get cocky. Well, And also, you're just like checking a box. You're like, okay, I got them all done. It's like, no, taking a little bit in at a time. Sending a voice. I'm always like voice note back so I don't have to. But then people do it back and I'm like, fuck. (laughs) I know. And then I'm Don't expect a response for three months. Yes, then I'm caught in like the voice note like. (laughs) game the whole time um but we had uh, when you were at the membership call i had an engagement shoot yes finally you know after a year and a half of being engaged we were able to have an engagement shoot and it was amazing it was with um katie keely she's a listener and she is just an amazing photographer she did such a great job she was so professional and she was just so directive and we did it at the proper and they're cool with like photo shoots it was amazing. I was like the best place. Literally, to have a photo and I'm shoot. so used to sneaking the fuck around <laughs> I know. and sweating You're my like, ass Justin, off. Sh- I li- literally, I'm like, put your camera away, put it in the backpack, like play it cool. And I was, it just was such a relief to shoot freely. Oh. And then we went to El Matador, which I've never been to, but it oh. was like where everyone shoots at. Beautiful. Everybody shoots at El Matador State Beach in Malibu. Unreal. Yeah, but you weren't topless, like sh- like showing your ass. Totally. I, we <laughs> like did have everyone to change else. though. I, we did have to change though behind a rock. And I wore my friends this. My friend had this sparkly dress she wore um, that I borrowed, and every no clothes I bought were new. Everything was like old because I didn't have enough time for anything. But otherwise, it was like so beautiful, and I mm. felt um, really good. Like when shoots just flow. Yes, I'm like okay, nothing, nothing better, nothing better. And it's funny, it's like beautiful. how much we shoot photos. I'm like. It's I know, isn't it terrible that we get sick of, we're just yes. like, <laughs> like at the end, it's funny. Justin's like, okay, I think I'm done. Cause at the end of photo shoots, there's a moment where you're like, I'm done. I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm not smiling anymore. I know. When, I know when you're, you're done yes. and it's like the most, ob- you're just li- literally like the color falls from your face and you're just, you're on planet Mars. I'm like, cause she's done. I'm, we're not doing I'm this done. anymore. <laughs> I'm done because it's fake then. Then I'm like, I'm being fake. Help me. Um, But it was really beautiful. So I wanted to to thank her for that. And then, yeah. And I got my hair done before. I mean, the opposite of what I said I wanted, but (laughs) whatever. Who knows? Sometimes a freestyle. I think it looks great. Sometimes there's a freestyle moment that happens. And I just was like, wow, okay, this is not at all what I wanted. But hey, whatever. (laughs) whatever we're two did months you, out for my did wedding you tell her just do whatever you want um yeah i did i think i'm gonna go back yeah if i get like enough energy to do so but i was like i guess i need to figure this out before yeah before my wedding i think it looks great but i know what you mean where you're just like i didn't fucking ask for this she's, excuse she, me i love her she's I my know, girl and i recommend her to everyone but she's like do you want the influencer hair i was like sure I don't know what that means. I didn't know what that mean. I'm like, what? Like tons of extensions? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, whatever. Um, but I this episode oh. with our girls, mm-hmm. Danielle and Natalie, I'm so pumped about. This has been just like months in the making. We were working with our team to schedule, and we finally were able to do a podcast swap with Danielle and Natalie of Boss Babe, and I'm really excited. I am so impressed with them. Like, 
so impressed and inspired. It, it's yes. one thing to really see what they've done on Instagram and with their business, just like growing it so much and serving so many women. Um, but it's another thing to really peel back the curtain and hear how strategic they are, hear how like calculated they are, hear how smart they are, hear mm-hmm. how like thoughtful they are and like what they've built in three years is no fucking joke (laughs) it's just so funny because when they said three years i was like honestly i I lost all the saliva in my mouth same same i was just like wait and this is the thing too it's like one of those things where i feel like so often like men see businesses and they're like oh like that's cute you have a business like if people do that with us sometimes they're like oh like the other day um, I was somewhere and this girl's like, well, how do you stand out and how do you like pay your bills doing what you do? I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> it, you know, it's that same thing where it's like, you see a woman that has a business kind of thing and you're just like, oh, like there's still sort of that programming that we have where it's like, oh, that's so cute. That's so nice. But it's like, no, like this shit is so real. So it's so real. real y'all. Like I they're mean, so successful. So successful. They have Almost 3 million followers. 3 million now. 3 million now. Yep. On uh, Instagram. They have like almost 20,000 clients in their paid programs. Um, It's just, it's unbelievable. And it was really cool. I'm always like so jazzed when we can sit down with other like duos. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because there's always similarities in like how, how they basically fit together like a perfect puzzle piece you know and Danielle and Natalie are so different and have different strengths and have been able to leverage those which you know Krista and I went through that evolution of really just owning what we were good at in the business and how much more productive we can be when we did that and just to hear that that's like a normal you know just Mm -hmm. hearing their story was um was really really cool but yeah I mean very serious over at fucking boss. Babe. Very serious. I Four was, times a day they're posting on Instagram. You guys, so here's the tactical <laughs> of, of some of their tips that they talked about. Something that Lindsay and I now think about um, very much is they really lean on and focus on the one channel where their target demographic is. So for them, that's Instagram. So that's why their Instagram is so robust. It's beautiful. It's helpful. It's inspirational. All of these things. And for us, I was one of those people. I'm like, we have to hit everyone on every channel. We have to be on LinkedIn. We have to be on Pinterest. All these things. And there's something to that. I think for a lot of business owners, especially if you're a creators or in the digital space, it's helpful to be on all channels. But I was like, actually, is it better to just really lean in and like be really good where your target demographic is? And it's made me really rethink about our social media strategy, even just from that minor tip. Yes. Yeah. It's so genius. And I think, you know, there is something to, um, taking the time to know your audience on like a very deep minutia level like who are these women and what are they interested in but even going farther than that like where are they in the world and because of where they are in the world like what might their interest in entrepreneurship be and yeah it's it's really really fascinating and it really took the pressure off of and I'm sure a lot of you feel this way out there where you see another platform pop up like a TikTok or this or that and it's like I should do that oh my god and then you spend so much time and energy being like, should I do that? Oh my God, it's overwhelming. I don't want to. And like, you've lost so much time where you could have been pouring into the one platform that comes naturally to you, where your audience lives. So for me, that took some of the pressure off. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. And we talked a lot about um, their relationship. So how to have, you know, a business with your best friend, a co-founder. And then we also talked about some of like their personal journeys and how they really focus on the inner work to show up in their business, which was really fascinating, you know, because we have our own thoughts and our own journey with that. And we know how important it is to really do the personal work as business owners that are public figures and even just as business owners in generals. So to help and hear their story with that was powerful. We talked about plant medicine, too. Yes. Guys, I mean, the more and more us. we ask, the more I people know, the say more they've done know, it. The more you know. Um, so we are huge fans of Danielle and Natalie. They are just so cool and so kind and so, you know, just amazing. They're they're incredible. And I know you guys are going to really love this interview. Mm-hmm. So if you're from the Boss Babe fam, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Um, it's, you know, going to be a good one. Yeah, honored to have you guys. You can learn more about uh, Boss Babe itself on bossbabe.com. Follow them on Instagram. They have incredible programs as well as their podcast, which they just, they rock at. It's called the Boss Babe Podcast with Natalie and Danielle. So check it out, subscribe, um, and share this with a friend. 
you know, Mm -hmm. if anyone's starting a business, I feel like they are the go-to experts, um, in this way and especially leveraging social media to grow your brand and community. Yep. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. We will see you on the other side of this one and enjoy. Yeah, we love you. So it's almost like you guys understand each other's like love languages in a way. Like you guys understand how each other see the world. And so my understanding is that you're more like numbers, like kind of the logical. And so you sharing it to her in that way was almost like in a way that she could understand it. Yeah, that definitely helps. Um, We it's interesting because it took us a really long time to understand how each other needs to be communicated to. And I'm sure you guys can relate. But in the beginning of our relationship, Danielle might be working on something and present it to me and she thinks in in her mind she's like this is exact this she's gonna love it it's gonna clearly communicate (laughs) and then I would look at it and it it just wouldn't be what I wanted to see at all and we've really had to learn how to communicate with each other and realize that just because some you like to be communicated to in a certain way doesn't mean someone else needs to but it's a journey and we're always I mean we've done therapy together we've done all the things we treat our relationship almost like a marriage Mm -hmm. yeah same yeah what is so you've done therapy together how else have you really cultivated that just really clear communication and understanding in work and out of work I think as well it's like starting to look at that yourself right for me it's never about okay the therapy with Natalie it's like the therapy with myself and then sharing that with Natalie like okay actually I understand like these are my stories or these are Mm -hmm. my triggers what can I do to work on those and overcome them but then also share vulnerably with Natalie like hey when you said this this is a story I told myself but really recognizing it that is on me and not on her and just really and like Natalie said just like any relationship whether it's a marriage or whether it's a friendship just learning and growing and really knowing in our hearts we always have the very best intentions and Mm -hmm. no one's intentionally ever going out their way to upset each other and I think just really allowing ourselves to learn and grow like you know we've been um, in business just over three years together now which really is not that long But we've been through so, so much that we're just continually like evolving as people and just being on that journey and open to that journey together, I think has been really key. Yeah, and that a big part of it is really just having grace with one Mm. another and having understanding of that person's experiencing and never expecting that person to be perfect and never fuck up. Because there's been times where I might have sent Danielle like a ridiculously reactive, projected uh, voice note, or she's done the same to me. And in that moment, you're just not your best self. You're showing up as this three-year-old that's just trying to get their emotions out. And in that moment, you just get to be a good friend and you get to be, you know what, I see you, I either, I'm going to, you know, take a few minutes to gather myself or I'm going to come and just let my guard down and, and speak to you where you're at and support you. And like Danielle said it's all about doing your own work too to get yourself in a built in a space to be able to do that or knowing you can't but never showing up to match that other person's emotion if they're really in it I I can say we've never had like a full-on argument where we've both been really in it and like yelling at each other anything like that it's always been in in, in a situation one of us kind of steps into like what we call the parent role one's like you know what go for it go I'm just gonna I'm gonna hold this and then we'll take turns and it and it really helps and it makes you feel safe to then express with that person Mm -hmm. which builds more trust which then means you have a stronger relationship Mm. yes yeah we've yeah people have asked like have you fought we've never fought like but we definitely have had our ups and downs of our relationship we've been in business four years and I think when you guys met you immediately started the business too or started to ideate it Pretty right much, yeah. yeah same it with was us a whirlwind relationship yes <laughs> we didn't even really know each other as friends which I think was really helpful yeah because then you don't have this perception or idea of this person and we can kind of both show up as like the business partners or podcast hosts that we wanted to um, for you guys to have the self-awareness enough to be like this is a story I'm telling myself or this is sort of like what I'm working with in the relationship, did you guys have to do work on your own to get to that place and realize that like what you were bringing up in each other was really your stuff? Yeah, we've both done so much work and I think it, we continue to, to do it. There's always going to be another layer that's unlocked and you're always realizing it. So we, we do a lot of our own work individually, whether it's, you know, plant medicine, whether it's therapy, whether it's reading, meditation, like lots of uh, lots of different tools in the toolkit that you can call on when you need to and when you do that work I think you become a safe space for someone else 
to be able to do the work in relationship. Yeah, totally. I will say though that I think for me personally, you know, I was in the UK up until February 2020 and mental health um, really is not spoken about mm-hmm. so openly. So, you know, I was probably, you know, going into business with Natalie and I got a lot of my exposure from her friends and her who were living in Los Angeles at that time. And so I started doing that work in the UK, but that was also very isolating. Like I didn't actually openly speak about even to my parents that I was starting to see a therapist or any of these pieces because there was that stigmatism around like, oh, is something wrong with you? Mm. Like, you, like, how are you feeling? Like, what's going on? Versus like, oh, that's actually just like if you just like you would have a personal tra- trainer and go to the gym. Like as you're growing and evolving and you want to have a stronger mindset and you want to achieve goals, I just think me- mindset and mental health is just like that. You need to work it out and you need to have trainers and people who can help you through those things. Yeah, I completely I agree. I think it's so underrated, those pieces mm-hmm. of totally. business that don't on the surface look like they have a part in business, mm-hmm. like working on the partnership, therapy, plant medicine. I mean, are we looking in the Tell mirror me here? More. I are know, you looking honestly, in the mirror? I'm like, <laughs> did you guys, what you guys do? <laughs> we've, we've done lots of different things together. Um, we've yeah. done, we've done mushrooms together, which was really fun. We've done that a couple of times. I oh, well. decided to move to LA on one of those trips. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> You're like, the mushrooms told me. <laughs> That's amazing. The souls told me. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, we did ayahuasca together in Costa Rica. We did like four nights wow. of it. Mm-hmm. How, how was, was that? Yeah, how was that together? Because I know mushrooms, it can be quite social, but ayahuasca, I've done it. Danielle's going to do it soon. Are you, very, right? Are you going to do it in Costa? Yeah. Where? Wow. Um, you don't, Saltara. Saltara. Oh, cool. Oh, okay, cool. we went to Rhythmia. Her oh, Saltara yeah, is beautiful. Too. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You were going to say. Um, How was it together? Oh, together. Yeah. Okay. So it was interesting because we actually had a really gentle experience. And like you said, it's kind of a very. So- it's like you're in solitude when mm-hmm. you're on Aya. You're not really interacting with people and they actually tell you not to um, if you're tempted. So I rarely saw Krista during the ceremony um, each night. But yeah, we. It was really gentle. We didn't get sick. Nothing came out at either end. Mm -hmm. And lots of crying. Lots of, for me, uh, lots of um, visuals as if I was seeing, like, just pieces of my life, like, as a movie, on a movie screen. And, um, yeah, just feeling incredibly connected to Mother Earth and the stars. Like, it was just, for me, it was was really beautiful. I think it'd be cool for us to do it again, like, together. Because they were like, don't stay together because if you stay together, then you'll sort of corrupt is too much. But you'll be like in each other's experiences. You'll be so worried about each other. Yeah. Like if she started to puke or something, like she was crying, you'd kind of be concerned about what the other person is doing. So we stayed far away from each other. But I think we should do it again. Yeah. Like, But you'll you'll like it. It's great. You. It's like they say your experience is exactly what you need. And yeah. apparently we needed just like a very gentle yeah. intro. <laughs> I didn't have much, to be honest. I was like. Felt like I was I had done ecstasy. I just felt like I was on ecstasy. I was just like very, I had cool visuals and like some things, but I didn't have like anything profoundly transformational like I think some people do. So maybe I'll try it again. But I do think that stuff like plant medicine and even been thinking about when I had my periods in my life where I was doing like drugs, it's like those are not the best ways to see ourselves, but they really can be quick ways to like see ourselves or see parts of ourselves that want to be expressed like your move you know there are parts of mushrooms that are really helpful for like the direction and journey of your life and I think as entrepreneurs because we're so open to other things in business and life like it's just natural for us to try new things or explore different outlets it makes sense to sometimes explore these as well yeah and I think the uh, such a big piece is the integration of it so you might have that experience in one night but what are you doing to follow up that experience in the week's and yeah. months after that therapy because things might be unearthed and you might be unresolved to deal with them so it might not be the most pleasant situation or things might continually come up where if you're working with a therapist for months after you're still working through and integrating things I know for me personally that's been really important like sometimes plant medicine can give you a peek under the veil of like oh you get to work on this thing Mm -hmm. and then a therapist is you know trained in helping take you through that in a good way Mm -hmm. I also did Hoffman I don't know if you've heard of Mm -hmm. Hoffman um the Hoffman experience 
is absolutely incredible that's not plant medicine it's just um a deep dive week you go oh my friend carly stein has it and mm. she literally was like I'll, is obsessed it's one of the it's best like on site yeah it's oh. one of the best things i've ever done you go away for a week you hand your phone in um and you just do a week of deep work and it's really hard but it's very gentle at the same time mm. Um, I would say probably beyond anything I've ever done, that one experience completely changed my life. And going into it, I, I mean, I was like, what, what's really going to happen? It's just a week of like being in the like just chilling, being in the redwoods. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was I was very different when I came. Yeah, back. I've seen a big difference in you since you did that. Really? Yeah. What did you um, like? What was your biggest learning? Oh, that's such a good question. I think it just helped me to, I remember going into it, I was very unsure of who I was Mm -hmm. in a sense of for such a long time, I'd just been on this kind of like, what's the next thing? What's the next Mm -hmm. thing? Okay, I'm going to move here. I'm going to do this. Okay, I got married. Wait, what's my identity here? This was very quick marriage. Like I got married after four months. What's my identity there? And then business just started scaling like crazy. And I'm like, wait, who am I without the business, without all of these different things? I was just very, very unsure um, I went last year, I was 28, which I think is one of those ages where you start to be like, wait, who am I really at my core? And I remember going into Hoffman on day one and them asking, what do you want to get out of this? And I was just like, I want to have a deeper understanding of who I am and what I really want versus, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs or ambitious people can relate to this. You're sometimes on a magic carpet, right? Just like one opportunity after the next. And before you know it, if you don't slow down to take a real look at it, you might do it without intentionality. And I went into it like, I want to find out who I really am, what I want, and be able to live from that place of intention- intentionality. And I think I got that from there. Mm. Was it like deep group therapy? D- uh, group and individual. It was wow. very somatic. So oh, okay. the way that I typically explain it is like, we all know we store so much in our body and we, we just constantly from childhood store so much. And we never really get the chance to go back to that place where you know we're a three-year-old and x happened and it made us feel a certain way they work with you very somatically to identify those things that you're holding in your body and they make you feel safe enough to really go back and tap into your inner child and really reparent that inner child that's just looking for attention or love or affection and things like that so you do most of the works individually they might teach concepts as a group but then you go away and do your own work and that's in some of the practices that they have you do, um, you know, some of the journaling, some of the times they put you in silence, different things like that. Wow. Powerful. Yeah. Did your partner go with you? He went first. He oh, went really? No yeah. Way. Uh-huh. He went about six months before I did because I'd heard of it from a friend. Um, and my husband was like, I really want to do that. So he just booked right away and went <laughs> within like a week's notice. And wow. he came back just completely changed just I like loved him even more than I did before he went which I didn't think was possible and I just loved seeing that change in him and so it made me want to go and it was really nice to have him go first because I felt like when I came back he was in a place to hold space a lot better whereas he's used to me doing really weird things right Mm -hmm. going and doing (laughs) these weird things and coming back and he is like I have no idea what you're talking about but fine I'm going to be there for you but with Hoffman it was so like there's there's certain things when you go to Hoffman you get told hey don't tell anyone about this experience because when they come it should be very unique mm-hmm. and, and yeah, stuff. Sure. So when I came back and I was talking to him about those things I'm like I wouldn't be able to talk about this with anyone else but he could hold space in a different way which again I think in your relationships it's just important that you you're both on the same wavelength mm-hmm. and can hold space for each other. It's huge. Powerful. Wow. Um, that is fascinating and yeah it's really nice to talk to you guys about the the friendship thing and being in business because I think people see the outside and they're like that looks so fun and it is you know it's just a joy but there is a lot of work to it and especially as women I think we have to work against like you know what's been ingrained in us to be competitive or to compare or to like seek validation outside and I think when we do things like therapy it's just so important Um, how do you guys work on things just like in the way that your business is structured because it's social there's so much of like validation in numbers and sort of like in like social response so how do you guys make sure that you're like being mindful but also finding validation from within I think that's a great question because you know for me as well a lot of my roles have not been like the social forward side of things so a lot of my numbers are kind of like 
less, how do I say it, less glorified, you know? But I think really, like, we always treat Boss Babe as, like, a baby. Like, it's a whole entity. And so all of those things have to marry together. And so whenever we're thinking around, like, okay, what what is going to get the instant, like, gratification or instant results? But how does that affect long term as well? And I think for us, it's always been that continued conversation around, okay, what can we do to short term? But what does long term look like? And then we've built that onto, like, our values as a company or our values and our partnership and always just lived by those. So we always have, like, a lens that we're looking through things. So we can always, like, it's so easy if you don't have, like, those ground rules of, like, who you are as a company and what you it has to be like. Um, it's very easy to get swayed, but I think we've always been really rooted in like what we'll do, what we'll say, and what we won't do, and what we won't say. Yeah, and we were just having a conversation this morning about the idea of competing attention um, mm. intentions, mm. and so what that might be is okay. We say on one hand we want to have a really supportive culture where we can nurture and coach our team, and on the other hand we're driving for a really aggressive growth goal. Are those intentions both competing? And if mm. they are it makes things very unclear and it means you don't know where you're going and you don't know how to prioritize and neither does your team and so we kind of try and take this intentionality towards anything we do when we're thinking about what's our revenue goal what's our community goal we were just chatting to you guys before we came on air about you know we do less things than people might think like we're on fewer channels than we are on channels and that's really important for us because if we're saying okay we're going to prioritize the podcast this year or we're going to prioritize the instagram this year then it's very hard to justify being on tiktok being on uh, clubhouse being on all of these different apps when you know that's your main goal so we just try and stick to a focus and go all in with it Mm. that's so interesting i feel like how do you Cause I'm thinking about like sticking to that goal, but then having all of these other platforms just kind of blow up and have mm-hmm. that intensity and kind of allure around them. So how do you know, like, how do you kind of justify that one goal and where your focus is? Do you, is it between just you both? Do you have mentors, coaches? Do you have like experts that you're tapping into mm-hmm. all of the above yeah <laughs> yeah and it really co- and by the way it's okay to change it every yeah. quarter it's okay to be like q1 we're focused on instagram q2 we're focused on podcasts it's okay to change it but it really comes down to well what's the point of me doing that why would i be doing that okay if i get on talk t- tiktok tactic if I get on TikTok, <laughs> exactly that's new actually there's another one <laughs> <laughs> if i get on this app what am i trying to get from it okay well i'm trying to grow an audience why um so that i can grow my business how um well i would want to grow my membership okay well how would you do that well i'd get them on my email list oh so it looks like your focus is your email list and so it's really just p- peeling back those layers to understand what that main goal is and so if we decide okay you know what for 2021 our main goal is growing our email list then it's really easy to justify doing instagram and youtube and podcast and clubhouse as long as you're using those secondary channels to drive towards the one channel Mm -hmm. and always tracking that metric so not getting so caught up in the youtube followers or the instagram followers just noticing okay i'm doing this thing is it pushing me closer towards that goal of growing my email list or that thing that i believe is going to move the needle in our business Mm -hmm. yeah and i think around it's like not spreading that energy too thin like we only have like a certain amount of that and so we always try to be in like don't get don't get us wrong like shiny object syndrome does exist we're like oh is that a better way of doing that should we look at that <laughs> but just really trying to come back to okay if we if we put energy into all of these different places we're not going to get as far as if we kind of hone in on one or two things to really move the needle and i think that's what we've always tried to get the balance with and it's really helpful when there's two of you to be like I will always say, Natalie, I don't disagree, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. <laughs> like, that's, I always say that. Mm-hmm. Don't know, you know? Like, always like, try and, like, look, okay, do we actually need to do that? Is that always going to go to, is that going to help us towards our goal, or is that just going to be a distraction in the meantime? And how did you guys determine, um, just for people that are listening that are entrepreneurs or, you know, business owners are wanting to start, how did you guys determine email list as, like, your number one priority? So, for us, it's always been, Firstly, it's been something that we're good at and I really think lean into something that you're good at. And secondly, it's always been a big needle mover for us, whether that's in the way that we can create connection with our community or whether it's the way in which we convert people into our programs. It's always been a real needle mover. And because for me, 
I'll just speak for myself, I love to write. I really, really do. So writing comes a lot more naturally to me than filming videos for YouTube. And when you choose the path of least resistance for you, it's often the most effective because you're more likely to be consistent with it. You're more likely to put more energy into mm. it. So it really was a kind of a mix of like, what are we good at? And what do we know is going to move the needle? And if you think around emails as like real estate, you like fully own that, mm -hmm. you know? Instagram, you're like leasing. You're kind of like renting that space in a way. You don't really fully own it. Um, whereas it emails like you own, they're your entity. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason why we've always made sure we focused on that as well. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, you know, just as we continue to talk, I feel like it's it's really cool to see kind of where your strengths and just kind of your personalities pop. On your website, I saw the Zone of Genius quiz, which I love, and mm -hmm. um, reading Gay Hendrick's work, I I yeah, I just so good. adore him, and I just think it's so clear and really freeing. How, wh how and when did you find your Zone of Genius? Has it always been clear, or... What was that like? <laughs> yeah, I think different answers for both of us. <laughs> yeah, very different answers. For me, yes, it's always been clear. It was very natural. But I think, well, for you, Danielle, yeah. it's been less so. Oh, it's been a work <laughs> in progress. I feel you. A mess. <laughs> I know. I had like, so much stress over this like for so long. I was like, I probably kind of really related to like, a heptathlete. You know, I was like good at a lot of things. Mm -hmm but wasn't really like excelling in one thing to just complete in that, you know, compete in that one sport. And it took me, I felt so guilty about that for so long. But in time, I really realized that that's who I needed to be. And actually that was my genius zone at that point, you know, being able to be good and understand loads of different bits so that we could actually, you know, grow the company. Because like you say, when you're growing a company from scratch, you have to be all of the things. And so it was really, really nice for me to be able to just be like, okay, it's okay that I'm like one minute. I mean, I, I must have had so many titles in Boss Babe. It's insane. Like I've collected. <laughs> so what I've you, what's collected your title? titles. Mine's CEO. And then yours has been like. Oh, it's been everything. It's been <laughs> customer services. It's been COO. It's been president. It's been co-CEO. It's been like <laughs> head of operations. You like, wake uh, up one day, you're like, you know what? New title. It's been business brand. development. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm okay with that now. And I realized that that was my genius over the long time as it's developed I'm really able to see a lot of the things that I can definitely lean into and have definitely been like wow I actually really excel in this area um but it, it took me a long time to get there and what about so what, what what do you love to do in the business I love business development so for me it's being able to kind of like connect the dots for our growth is really really powerful for me for me and something I really really enjoy um and then also just being behind the scenes you know I don't um I love doing podcasts I love being on stage but do you know what I I'm not about having my face on Instagram every day <laughs> and so it's been really nice for me to kind of like work in the back end of things and the operations and just making sure like stuff happens I'm really good at Natalie's really good at starting things and I'm really good at finishing things like oh, wow. I'll dig deep when everyone else is giving up I'm like come on team <laughs> we've committed to this I'm like driving it I'm really freaking good at finishing things <laughs> <laughs> that's actually amazing wow that is not my thing Natalie's just like okay we have this joke when Natalie, like we say, Natalie gives birth to these babies <laughs> and just passes them to me. That's why I like all the little, all the little babies. What's an example of that? Oh, pick, pick one. <laughs> everything. I mean, we'll just have an idea for something and I'll go away and research it and I'll conceptualize it. I'll design it. I'll make it look great. You know, it, it will get it off to a, a certain success level and then I'm like huh what's next and I'll forget about it and Danielle's like you know this thing still exists oh yeah <laughs> you're very very good at seeing things through to like the very very end and I yeah. and that's what that's something for me I actually realized this um when I was in university we did a team project and we each had to do um team roles and we did these personality tests and we got told to look for starters and finishers. And it was really interesting to see wow. that actually exists. And I was like, oh my God, there's actually people that can finish things. I just couldn't get my head around it because it's yeah. just not me. And we didn't even go into our relationship knowing that's what we no. needed, but it, it happened very naturally, which was great because I just don't think we would have been here without that. No, I don't. I think you're, you're an amazing starter as well. I think we we have a very interesting way that we ideate stuff. So Natalie will be like there, and then I'll like kind of like 
you know, send some good lines in. We'll be on that first deck together. And I was just like throwing things over the fence. She's like catching them. And, yeah, that's a good idea. And then yeah, she'll do it more and I'll come in. And then it comes back to me. And we have this kind of like this two, like two way approach, don't we? Who are you guys, like, down. what are the decks for? Who are you guys presenting them to? To each other. other. <laughs> and literally obsessed with that. No, we, um, so we have a team that we, we yeah. have a leadership team and then we have our okay, full cool. team. Okay. So we do present decks quite a lot to make sure that we're really getting people bought in and everyone knows that we're rowing in the same direction. But before anything goes past oh. me or Danielle, we always do it together and gut check with each mm. other because we're very good at seeing what's missing from each other's uh, work yeah. but we always generally go to our team with a pitch deck with a deck so that people can refer back to it and um, people are learners in different ways some people can hear it some people need to see it some people need to read it and if they've got that it helps people to understand where they're rowing towards and, and also like for us it's really important that we don't share things too early too because yes. it just means it's so confusing or distracting for the team yeah so there are a lot of decks that don't even see the the team don't even see in the end, which is probably a good job. But, um, you know, there's there's just a lot for us. Like, Natalie and I, we need to really flush the ideas out before we kind of share them with the teams because otherwise it would just be overwhelming. Like, I know, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs will get this, right? Like, we do like shiny objects and we do like new things and we do like starting and growing stuff and that's really, really exciting for us. And we also need to remember that not everyone's like that and other people can find that super overwhelming. So how many people are on the team? We have around 20, 20 now. Yeah, sure. Dang. Wow. And then what's your leadership team like? Uh, small. small. Yeah. There's four of us. Yeah. And so it's you two and then two others? Yeah. yeah. And then who does the day-to-day -day interaction with the team? Like, what's sort of that like? We have a chief of staff. Okay, cool. Yeah, who does um, the majority of the interactions with the team and keeps everyone rowing in the same direction and makes sure everyone's happy. That's new, though. Like, for, for a long time, Natalie and I have been really in the business. And we keep... You know, it's really important to be in the business and then work on the business. In 2020, we were definitely in the business more than we wanted to be. So it's really nice yeah. moving in with our new hires that we can start pulling out again, which I think is just really important. But you have to do what you need to do in certain moments of growth as well. And I, I always really want to be, you know, you were talking earlier, when for us, one lens that we always are really passionate about sharing is like the real behind the scenes of building businesses. Mm -hmm. And I never want anyone to listen and be like, oh yeah, it has to be this way or it has to be easy or it has to be this. Like there are times when it's like, yeah, the book says do they do that, but the reality is that just can't be done and you have to roll your sleeves up and get in and do it yourself. But we are at this point where we've really invested in our team and I really, if there's anything that was an entrepreneur takes away is like hire slow and fire yeah. fast mm -hmm. is so yeah. crucial. And we took a really long time to hire our chief of staff and she has just been absolutely incredible. Like a complete game changer for us. Oh. Yeah. So what have you... Because, you know, we talk about this a lot just with ma managing a team and how much time and energy that you have to put into it. Um, what have been your takeaways when you r were really in the business and interacting with your team on a daily basis? What are your biggest takeaways for people that are building a team? Uh, so many things. I mean, in the beginning, it's really important to realize that if you're not clear, there is absolutely no way that your team is clear. And people cannot perform at their best without clarity. And so you have to be really good at first getting clear yourself, but then being able to communicate that really clearly. So people know what success looks like for them. Because if they don't know what success looks like, they're never going to measure up to you or to themselves. And sometimes people can get stuck in a loop of they don't get that positive feedback that they're looking for. So they start to doubt themselves. So then their work slips even more and it just repeats itself in this cycle. And what can what has happened to us in the past is we might have looked at an employee who wasn't performing consistently over time and we're like, they're just not a fit anymore or something's gone wrong here versus just realizing they just need a win. They need a win and they need to know that they are doing a good job and we need to make that path clearer for them. That's something that we've really learned. Yeah, we've had like really detailed job descriptions now as well with KPIs yes. so that everyone, it's really, it's really outlined because people want to know. So this is an analogy that I use is like people need to know what their, what the boundary is that they can play in. And I'm not like equating employees to children or anything like that, but you know, they need to know like what's <laughs> safe and what's not. Like what is the playground? What are the markings? What are the rules of the playground? Like everyone needs to know. And even as leaders, we need to know that. And so I think that's something that we've worked really hard at putting in place. The other thing I love to do is take 
personality tests. Love that. So we have a slight obsession with that. But we have everyone in the on- as they're onboarding and they take personality tests so that we can know things like even down to their love languages. Because you can have lo- love languages with a partner, but you can also have them in work and relationships and knowing like, okay, if someone receives praise, do they like a gift? Do they like words of affirmation? Like what is it for them that allows them to feel seen? And just really understanding like Natalie shared earlier, when we do decks, there's different types of learners. So the more that we know about the people that we can we work with, the more that we can play to their strengths and help them thrive because ultimately that's what we want everyone in our company to thrive and enjoy coming every day. Um, so we've just been like, it's been a gradual process, but we're just putting a lot of these pieces in mm. um, has really helped. Yeah, and like bringing it full circle, I think that playground analogy is so important because early on, you and I defined our own playgrounds yeah. with our roles. So true. And now mm. it's kind of, it goes without saying, I know what I have complete say on and Danielle knows what she has complete say on. Yeah. And there are times when we might disagree with each other and we just don't say it. We're like, you know what? You know more about this than me. That is your zone of genius. That's your area. Go do it. I'm in full support versus challenging just for the sake of challenging Mm -hmm. or just to have your ideas heard. I'm like, my playground, I'm never going to challenge Danielle when it comes to like ops things and running the business and business dev in, in certain ways because I'm like, I might have ideas, but I'm not in it. And I trust that whatever decision she's making she's making for the good of the company and, and same yeah. uh the other way around when it comes to say content you know danielle might come <laughs> to me and say hey are you open to feedback on that piece of content i might be like not really i'm like struggling getting in flow right now just like cool fine with that and mm. and we just trust that we have the right intentions wow love that yeah i love that i'm re- actually learning a lot yeah <laughs> i'm feeling inspired and stressed at what we're <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm curious about this because I actually don't know the answer myself do you think that people are naturally born entrepreneurs or do you think that they can become entrepreneurs I think it's a mix I was born an entrepreneur I think it depends on your values. Mm. So I wasn't born an entrepreneur. I was not the child like Natalie is selling sweets around the block. You know, that was not me. Um, <laughs> but what happened to my role is that I was always a really hard worker. And I always had all the jobs. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know, had retail jobs, teaching dance. Like, I was like the wealthiest kid because I just had all this work, all these jobs and no time to spend my money, right? But the, the value there was that I really, really was obsessed with growth. Like I always wanted to do better, learn more. Um, And so that inspired my entrepreneurial journey. And I think that could have easily been within a career and I could have kept, you know, working up the ladder. But my other core value is freedom. Yeah. So that combined, Mm -hmm. that growth and freedom is just like the entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. (laughs) magic, really. Mm. Um, So that's where I found myself. Totally. Yeah. Mine is freedom. You know, from a young age, I was like, when I realized that, I wasn't, I didn't get an allowance or anything when I realized that if I had money, I could do what I wanted. I was like, oh my God. And so I just was like always working forever. And I think freedom was like the biggest thing for me to be an entrepreneur. And I think I was, I don't, I think I was born to be one because I've always been a questioner. Mm -hmm. Like I would always be in work environments and just be like, why are we doing this? Or why are we doing this this way? Or why are we like, like I didn't really like the social, the social, like the social expectations and weirdness that happens at corporate jobs where it's like people do things that they don't want to do consistently and no one makes change. I didn't really like that. So I'd always be questioning things, but yeah, I wonder that too. And I think what I want to get across is that I think people, if they have the work ethic or they just are really clear in their values that they can be an entrepreneur if they really seek to be. Yeah. I think that's a a passion in a way. Mm -hmm. It's not like the easiest journey. So I feel like, you know, if you if you're an entrepreneur, like there's something in your heart that's yearning mm-hmm. to do that. Yes. And I was thinking too the other day how it's like I thought when I would wasn't an entrepreneur, I'm like, if I'm an entrepreneur, it's easier. Oh. And you know, and I actually thought that. I was like, Oh, once I have freedom, all is well. And I actually technically have freedom n- now, but I don't. You know, there still is like a nuance to the freedom that you create when you are an entrepreneur because there are things that I have to do actually to make money. You know, there are yeah. things that, so I actually thought it would be a lot easier being an entrepreneur and it's just so much harder than I ever thought. Yeah, and I, I do think it's quite glamorized yes. at times mm-hmm. as like the best career choice and the thing everyone should aspire to. I mean, especially with Instagram, you see it all the time. 
and it really isn't and it shouldn't mm-hmm. be you know not everyone is meant to be an entrepreneur and being an entrepreneur isn't as glamorous as it might look there are so many things that come with that um, and we have a lot of entrepreneurial people in our team who have been out tried the entrepreneur thing and been like you know what I love that one thing that I'm really good at. Let's say it's writing copy. I hate the filing my LLC, doing Mm -hmm. my taxes, doing managing people. That pulls me away from the thing that I'm really good at. Mm. That they talk about that in the book, the E Myth, where, you know, let's say you bake really amazing cupcakes. That's what you're you're known for. And you're like, I'm gonna start a bakery and all of a sudden the bakery takes off. Um, and you move away from being the person that makes the cupcakes to the person that manages team, that tallies up. Uh, how much you made at the end of the day what you're spending how to market yourself takes you away from that thing you're really really good at and and for me that's great I love that side of entrepreneurship and for some people it's not and I really just for anyone listening who has ever felt like that's the glamorized way to go I just don't think it is I think it's a mix and I think it's different for every single Mm -hmm. person you can be so good at what you do and not be your own boss Mm -hmm. and I think there could be like an entrepreneurial energy within a corporate mm-hmm. setting or within a smaller startup company where you take initiative and yep. you own, you know, um, ideas that you have or a group of people have and kind of drive that. So I think you could live within, cause we have a lot of people who are in corporate mm-hmm. jobs, not necessarily entrepreneurs and yeah, just wanting to like empower them as well. Because I think like those pieces of them that are like, huh, should I start my own business? But again, like don't really love that part of the process on the other side of it can actually be like that entrepreneur within the company i completely agree with that i think you can get um like entrepreneurs particularly in the startups are like phenomenal for that i love it when our team come with ideas and initiatives I mean, mm-hmm. i'm yes. just like mm-hmm. and you know you were saying earlier we were chatting around like getting encouraging team to thrive that was a really big learning for us as well like how much weight mine and natalie's you know words have on our team and giving them back some of that power and be like no like you're in this on the daily you tell us if you think there's something that could be done better in what you're doing on a daily basis let us know um because when you have people taking that initiative in companies like that's when you Mm -hmm. really grow and thrive but i quite agree like i actually am I did a few interviews of women who have gone been in the corporate and versus just starting a business straight away, they've gone and worked in a startup so they mm. could really get that feel for that and decide whether they still wanted to be an entrepreneur or actually they just really kind of thrived in that earlier stage business but with other people around them because entrepreneurial journey can be lo- lonely, you know. Mm-hmm. That's why we created our membership because we were lonely as our, yes. in our businesses before that. Yeah, and one thing I want to circle back on when you had said, oh, I'm getting so inspired and I'm also getting stressed from the, all these things. Honestly, if I've learned one thing about being a a business owner, it's that it is so easy to give advice. Mm -hmm. And it is also very difficult to be able to apply advice because everyone's business is so different. And the behind the scenes of everyone's business, there are so many problems. And for a while, we kind of got in that space of like, oh my God, everyone's doing things better than us. Everyone's coming to us with all these ideas, all these feedback and all this bits of advice, but we don't have capacity. We don't have time. We're not sure about doing X, Y, Z. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned is like, I can hear feedback or I can hear advice and ideas and be like, sounds good. Not for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, that discernment is so huge of that. Um, I think we talked about it a little bit, but for like specifically your you have your mental health support with therapists, like for coaches and are you guys part of masterminds? Do you guys work with coaches regularly or what sort of is your support for like your up level and learning all of these strategies you guys use? Yeah. So we're not in any formal masterminds or have coaching. We have a really good therapist. We have the same one, Um, but we're, you do when you go separate. Yeah. 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 She's just really good. I love that. We've had to stop giving her name out. I know. She's too busy. (laughs) Oh, I, I, yeah. (laughs) But, uh, we're in masterminds with friend groups. Okay. Yeah. So groups of friends that come together with the sole purpose of supporting each other. So we're in masterminds where it's never about what you can gain from the other person. Like, mm-hmm. of course, every single one of us has something unique that we can bring to the table. But you want to be in spaces where it feels like, you know, people are there just heart open, ready to support. And those are the kind of groups that we've we um move towards so we just have been in some that are facilitated by other people and have facilitated our own and we're in you know text threads and whatsapps and we do zooms with them and 
it's really nice to have that it's nice to have a safe space with people who have experience who you can go to and say hey my team's feeling really demotivated this week or hey my payment processor work uh, my payment processor isn't isn't working what do I do and have that support Mm. that's been so incredibly important we've also had periods where we have done paid coaching as well so like if we've had something that we've particularly been focusing on our business um so we wanted to do um improve our leadership framework um to which natalie and i could work with so we saw a woman who got much more experience in bigger startups than us um so kind of around like the the kind of 25 to 50 million and so just really like saying like how do we not fall corporate but how do we start you know introducing more formalities so it's like again marking out that playground for everyone Mm -hmm. as well so you know whenever we have periods where we want we want to focus on something we're very intentional about who we seek out as well like we always like to learn from people who have been where we want to be versus so we're very selective of where we take our advice as well which is what I would always recommend for people yeah that's a really good point we didn't know how to structure an all hands and have people present their data to us so we just went to someone who could teach us and when we wanted to start YouTube we didn't want to just buy a camera and go all out so we hired a coach that could teach us how to do YouTube we also just recently hired story brand have you heard of Donald Miller building a story brand it's a really great book um we read that book and got so much out of it so we hired a story brand facilitator they basically help you to tell your brand story in a way that connects with your clients um and we got a facilitator to come in and spend two days with our team and we all brainstormed and got super clear and it was really good for two reasons we we got to learn a lot about how to structure the story brand and we got to have our, our entire team on the same page and their ideas were heard and it's you know boss babe isn't just me and danielle it's our entire team and it's our entire community so things like that we love to invest in it's it's such a great roi for us yeah. Love them. yeah i love pulling in the team i think you know those moments with our team as well it's on a smaller scale but just having bringing them into the fold of our learning mm-hmm. whether it's coaching um we or have just like psychics <laughs> <laughs> you guys have we're like, like hey guys Donna reiki Miller, session yeah we're like we're having a psychic <laughs> do a clearing <laughs> oh we do oh, that so we're like, you do? We're like yeah. kiki's here we're, yeah, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a, a curse breaking anyway <laughs> yeah, <it's> honestly <laughs> curse breaking abundance mindset meditation okay <laughs> oh my um, god just on the before we get into the podcast just on the financial end did you guys have like always have just a really good handle on money and especially as it translates to entrepreneurship or did you kind of have to Mm -hmm. you know rework either your relationship with money no i we've always had a good grip on money that's good we're going to capricorn here okay capricorn (laughs) damn (laughs) very grounded wow Um, so i think i think for sure with regards to i've always been good with money in Mm -hmm. the sense that um, I've never been one of those people who would spend more than they'd earned. I've always had a lot of respect for money. The one thing I did learn, though, was that I did not come from an affluent background. So I hit money ceilings along the way. And my relationship with money has got better and I've actively worked on that. But right from the get go, we always had like P&Ls. We always knew like we were always looking at our bank balance. We were always always going, OK, can we spend this? Like, you know, one thing that um, I always say to people and a lot of people don't realize this. It was actually 18 months before I went full time in Boss Babe because I was actually a chiropractor and I had other businesses. So I had a really, really good hourly rate. So it didn't make sense for me to leave that when we could be paying people in our team to do things that then I would just be doing and foregoing my other salary. So I always think there's that balance and we've always been very like looked at it objectively around what's going to suit. And yeah, just had that kind of had our ducks in a row around that. Yeah. And I definitely had some money mindset issues again. I didn't go up with money quite the opposite. Um, and I had this big fear around losing money. Mm. I really had this big fear around losing money. And I did a lot of work on that and was able to channel it in a more productive way, which meant that for me, it's really important that I know exactly our money situation, both uh, personal finance and business finance. So with my husband, we're really, really proactive about we have a financial advisor, we have spreadsheets, we have tracking apps. We're very clear on that. And then same with us, us in business we're very good at tracking it and we have uh, weekly reports sent to us we can log in um, on a daily basis and see exactly how we're doing Um, and that's really important to me because when I had 
you know, a lot of issues around money mindset, one of my patterns was to avoid. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in university and I was in overdraft and student debt and all of those things, it was a lot easier for me to avoid it than look at it and acknowledge where I was really at. And my biggest kind of foot forward in that space was looking at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, even if it makes you uncomfortable, go look at how much you spent this month. Even if you're in debt, go look at how much you spent this month. And that's been really helpful because the minute you start avoiding something, it just piles up and gets worse. Mm. And so it's like confronting those things that make you really uncomfortable until it does. It's like exposure therapy yeah. until mm-hmm. it doesn't make you uncomfortable anymore. And the mental is, and emotional yeah. is just such a huge piece yeah. of like the energetics around money. I completely agree. Once I started to actually look at it, uh, it just diffused the the power that it had. And building habits around it as well. You kind of alluded that to that. Like we'll have it a weekly. We'll be going in and looking at it and going in separately or together. Together, together. And then do you guys? Or I guess when you were recognizing the ceilings, Danielle, like, and then breaking through them. Like, how did you recognize and then break through a ceiling? That's a great question. I think for me, very similar to, very similar to Natalie's actually. Mine was a lot around. Okay, am I going to lose it? Uh you know and really just understanding that first piece and then my second bit of work through that I needed to do was around speculating to accumulate in a positive way Mm -hmm. so in my natural instinct is to be more of a hoarder Mm -hmm. as you'll tell you this I really like spending money (laughs) and so for me there was a lot around like those two tying in with actually okay if I spend it wisely like actually it's not spending it it's investing it Mm -hmm then seeing those returns come in. Mm -hmm. And so really just testing that bit by bit. And even as we like growing our team, like I'm not going to lie, I get anxiety when we're increasing payroll, et cetera. I'm like, okay. But just, you know, bit by bit pushing that boundary. And for me, I've (laughs) I've always really found it that you can have the fear of not doing something, but the fear of, so the fear of doing something, the fear of not doing something has always actually been scarier for me. So I've always like held on to, okay, well, if we, we want to go to here, we want to make sure that we are growing the business in this way. So the fear of investing that is actually less than not achieving that bigger goal in the long point. So just really like putting it against something and seeing like what my bigger vision is and going, okay, I'm so aligned and that vision is so heartfelt that actually like investing in this feels a little less scary. And because I am a Virgo, I'll always back it back it up with a plan so like my plan will be there so I want to see the return in this time and if I don't then I can pivot yeah and we just recently did a podcast um, with one of our best friends Alyssa Nobrega and we were talking about why is it that people don't push past their upper limits you know they say they want to make x amount of money but they don't do it and she was like well imagine driving a car you have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake Mm. and the foot on the brake is all of those unconscious beliefs or or worries that are holding you back and so uh, she was talking about how she'll typically work with clients and she's been in the therapy and coaching space for over 16 years Um, she'll work with clients and they say you know okay I want to want to make 100k okay so what are you afraid of if that happens and initially they're like nothing of course nothing I'll feel great and she's like sit with it let's play with that and she she would notice things would come up for people while I'm worried that I would um, not be able to spend time with my family I'm worried xyz would happen and there's always something Mm -hmm. there that you can work with if you give yourself a chance to pause and look at it it was it was really Mm -hmm. insightful for us that's just reminded me I did a um goal setting session for our membership yesterday the society and I literally I always like to start them with like a meditation and the meditation was around like sometimes the fear of um isn't of not achieving it's like what if I do achieve it Mm -hmm. like what does that actually mean Mm -hmm. what if I what if I do all these things that I say I want to do Mm -hmm. and that can actually be really fearful for a lot of people so you're really right I love that powerful yeah our friend Peter Kelly um she was speaking recently at our at a virtual event we did and she was just speaking to that of like wow we are just so afraid of our own Mm. liberation Mm -hmm. um and it was just a really powerful thing because it sounds like wait what but it's so true and so deeply ingrained um curious last question for me just on starting a podcast um and at what point did you feel like it was time and it is as we all know, a lot more work than um, 
than people might realize from the get, but what was the value and what was the intention behind starting the podcast? We wanted to start it for such a long time, but it was kind of, if we can't do it properly, why do it at all? We've been go we've won a hundred and fifty episode now i think Mm -hmm. it's it's been it's been going it's been growing but when we first started it it was like if we cannot commit to being consistent we won't do it yeah um and it was one of those things that we played around with but we just knew we weren't prioritizing so as soon as we decided to do it that was the rule if we cannot be consistent we won't do it at all and you know we think back to the instagram days the only reason we did so well on instagram is because we showed up four times a day even on the days we didn't want to even on the days we were tired even on the days four we times had posting a day yeah that, that's what we did so we've always done from Where the very it, do beginning. you guys use a scheduler yeah 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 i do and it's still four mo- times a day still four times a day. holy moly i think in the entire Bless. time i would say i've only ever missed four times a day less than seven days no and way yeah yeah i do not miss it and I wanted to bring the same consistency to podcasting because I know it works. Um, and that's that's my biggest piece of advice with starting anything. It's are you really going to show up and do it consistently? Yeah. And for me, I am a um, quality over quantity type person. And for me, in-depth relationships are really important. And I love that about a podcast. Like I love that you get to spend like it's long form. You get to have a conversation. And, you know, I'm uh, Natalie shared earlier that she's someone who loves writing. I don't like writing. I just love chatting away. <laughs> <laughs> so um, podcasts were definitely my love language. And also just being able to meet amazing people and ask those behind the scene questions. So, you know, one thing that we love about the Boss Babe podcast is that we kind of ask those questions that not a lot of people get asked. That's one thing we always try and do is like, how can we make it different? How can we ask those like tangible pieces? Those questions that, you know, they'll give one answer and we'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper on that one answer that they just gave. And so for that, that was like a passion and just being able to like say, get to know amazing, amazing people that, you know, otherwise outreach would maybe be a bit more challenging. Like, why would you get to know them otherwise? Why are you like, hey, do you want to come on my podcast? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I want to ask you all these questions. (laughs) (laughs) Could be like a coaching session. It's so true. Oh, literally. Coaching advice right now. Um, Last question for me is just about your guys' Saturn return. So we were talking Mm -hmm. about Saturn returns before and this podcast was inspired by our Saturn return. I think I got out of mine. October of last year, I think. Not sure. But for you ladies, what has the Saturn return experience been like? I literally looked straight at Danielle. <laughs> I literally, <laughs> everyone was like, uh, I don't uh. know. I don't know when my Saturn returns officially supposed to end. Maybe it already has officially ended, but it definitely does I not don't feel think like it. Can. <laughs> Danielle's got this the Saturn return swagger going on. <laughs> literally. Post Saturn like, return come swagger. At me. You literally yeah. like, I don't know. But <laughs> you have a Saturn return that lasts four years. <laughs> <laughs> Starts when yeah. I started Boss Babe. Yeah. Moved to America. <laughs> I think yours is still going. I, I think mine's only just starting. Really? Yeah. How old are you? 29. I just turned yeah. 29. Oh my wow. gosh, bless. Yeah. Okay. A month ago. So I think mine's only just kicking up. Um, I think you're in yours, yeah, friend. I think for me as well, like, you know, and it's a period of change, right? Yes. Your Saturn return. Mm-hmm. And for me, my my 20s were very much um, on a treadmill that I put myself on. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're just on that path and you've kind of set the you or you or maybe it was even more like a, a i don't know I, maybe i sat set the sat nav up maybe it was a j- car journey i don't know what analogy you want to use <laughs> but did i say sat nav in america no oh what you yeah, say i didn't think so <laughs> <laughs> what, what you know your audience daniel <laughs> 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 the sat nav right like the, the navigation, navigation system, system? Like oh, oh oh okay cool oh, you know? oh got it got yeah. it <laughs> uh, thank, thanks for catching that it's like a different language guys, honestly. um <laughs> So yeah, I don't. I felt like in my twenties, I'd kind of set that destination. Oh, set a nav. Got it. Yeah, hundred. Yes, yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> like yeah. you know, sat, a satellite yep. navig- navigation. Yes. It's called yes. sat nav. Yes. Yeah, I'm educated. Got it. I got it. Yes. <laughs> You know, before you know it, Americans will be saying sat now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> Quote me on it here. Um, yeah, and so I just feel like on my twenties, I kind of had this vision or this destination in mind of where I was going but it hadn't really been picked from a place of my heart. It had been picked from what I thought I needed to do. Um, I spent a lot of my 20s feeling like I needed to be someone for different people versus really tapping into, well, actually, who do I want to be for me? Mm -hmm. 
And so that's what my Saturn return has been about, really just kind of like listening to my truth and going, okay, is that actually my answer? Or is that at the answer that I think people want to hear? Um, am I doing that because I want to do it? Or is it because I'm too nervous at the repercussions of saying no? Right. And yeah, I'm still in it. <laughs> it's it's an growth. exciting time. It's a and how about you? Time. What do you feel like, has anything happened yet? No, I I think it's starting to kick off because I'm noticing myself getting like antsy. Mm. Um, obviously, we're planning a move to Austin and I think that definitely has part of it. Just wanting a, a bit of fresh energy. Um, I've definitely been in a place where I've been reevaluating a lot of things. And um, we were just doing that this morning, going through business goals and challenging each other and reevaluating so I'm I'm getting there. I'm very antsy right now. I'm very up in the air. I'm like, where do I want to be? Where do I want to travel? Mm-hmm. What do I want to do? Uh, which feels really fun and scary. I'm Capricorn through and through. Mm. And so for me, I have a plan for a plan for a plan for a plan. And not having those plans is very unnerving. Mm-hmm. So we're working with that. We're working with a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> what about oh you God. guys? Uh. Saturn for Saturn return Mm -hmm. um mine was crazy I mean I left you know we built started building the podcast I was in the corporate world before so I I was in the corporate world for two years when we were building the podcast eight years before and then um just had crazy some health things a lot of friendship changes for me and then really just more of a deepening into my spiritual awakening and like who I am and how I show up yeah I had a pretty pretty bad breakup I think which like kind of launched me into it um and shortly thereafter um I got the opportunity pretty out of the blue to move to LA with the company that I worked at and I think just that was like the main event of my Saturn return where because I moved to LA I just felt I felt like this reset button was hit where yes I definitely had to look at a lot of things that weren't working um but I also just felt like this permission to just like actually look at it and actually, you know, put things into practice that I had been wanting to do. And for some reason, L.A. felt like more space to do that. Um, and then, of course, meeting Krista and starting almost 30. And yeah, I think I'm out of it. I'm 30. Yeah, here. I'm old. Yeah, you're fine. We're done. <laughs> Christ year, baby. We're done. Um <laughs> We'll share all the links and stuff in our show notes, but I'd love for you guys to tell our community what they can expect for you in 2021. Well, we're continuing to just really spend so much more time podcasting. We love it. So definitely check us out. Um, it's the Boss Babe podcast anywhere you listen. And follow us on social at bossbabe.inc. We are launching our, relaunching our membership, which feels mm-hmm. really exciting. Um, we've been building an entirely new platform to support entrepreneurs. So that's happening, but all the fun stuff will be on Instagram. Love it beautiful thank Thank you ladies all right we'll see you soon love you guys Bye. bye